Hello traders and welcome to the weekly Advocate setups volume 158. It's Ilya here and as always I'm really happy to welcome you on the Trading Fanatic channel. And as you know what we're going to do in this video, we're going to have a look at the market, how we developed this week, what kind of opportunities we have and most importantly what we can expect for the upcoming week, right? This one was very volatile. We had some amazing moves, right? The Dixie sold off very nicely, Euro pumped, Aussie pumped, NZD pumped, everything made some amazing moves. So hopefully some of you guys caught some of those and I do believe especially the swing traders because this week we really had some nice swing setups and I had some time to trade from Monday to Wednesday. Uh, I'm having an overall great week so I took a 5R on Monday uh, on a long on your USD and I closed it very early, right? It would have been probably a 50R trade by now but it is what it is. And uh, then I took a break even on Tuesday and then on Wednesday again the market ran up without me. And then I traveled 1,400 uh, kilometers on uh, Thursday and Friday. So here I am on Saturday recording this weekly outlook for you guys. So, of course, uh, if you're new to this channel, it is all about trading. I share this weekly outlook and setups every Saturday and once per week from September on. I'm going to be sharing an educational piece of content every week. So make sure you're subscribed and turn on the notification bell. And without further ado, let's head into the analysis. Alright, before we get started with the Dixie, shout out to my amazing broker CedarForex.com. They are great, they have all the instruments you wish to trade, stocks, cryptos, currencies, uh, precious metals and all of that stuff with great spreads. They also have two types of accounts, but make sure to pick their eco account, right? You're going to pay a little bit of commission, but every single lot that you accumulate will go towards planting 10 trees. They are the first green broker out there. So go check them out. Link is down in the description and make sure to open your eco account. All right. So let's get started with a Dixie. We are currently on the weekly time frame and we have a very nice um, bearish candle, which can actually tell us a lot of things, right? Because this candle has a very nice rejection on the bottom. The wick looks pretty much the size of the body as well. So pretty much we can say that it's overall indecision, but of course with a pinch of sellers, right? Because we saw that the Dixie really sold off this week. And I'm pretty sad that I didn't catch my swing trade on EU, but of course it is what it is. So uh, yes, pretty much uh, all the almost all the forecasted pairs from uh, last Saturday and from uh, Tuesday's flow with the market are playing out very nicely. We're currently retesting this overall zone on the Dixie, which is around 105. We just kind of crossed 105 this week and we went towards 104, almost 104.50, which is great. So right now the question is, do we have more downside or are we going to start finding support or demand from these sort of levels right there and then potentially actually initiate the push higher, right? I do think something economically has to happen as well. Right now there is a lot of optimism, right? Uh, Mr. Powell kind of hinting that inflation is starting to slow down, inflation is transitionary, as he, as he says, stock market is massively climbing, right? Which means, of course, that the dollar is going to fall off a little bit. But I think that's pretty much normal. Just looking at this big uptrend, of course, right now they want to throw some news out there in order to cause a little bit of a pullback before maybe another uh, kind of news event hits us, that inflation is getting worse and all of that stuff, right? So again, keeping my mind open to everything and the following up with the economic development. So let's see how it goes, okay? On the daily time frame, we are currently having that what we can call minor structure of the weekly time frame, which is currently bearish, right? So the flow is bearish and we're just tapping into the demand zone, right? So is this a break? Is this a liquidity grab? We are about to see. And pretty much on the daily, this is our major uh, lower high right there. So until we, as long as we are below this level, we are bearish on the daily, right? I don't utilize too much the daily, although it's a very important time frame because oftentimes you're going to have a confusion between the daily and the hourly, right? Because just right now, if I go to the hourly, um, okay, I, do, I don't have the example that I wish to have, but imagine we had a push, we had a pullback, we had a lower low, and right now we're breaking the last lower high. So technically we are in a bullish market, right? You know, the daily is bearish, but hourly is bullish, of course, but then... What you really need to understand, understand is structure and the relation to the, the, the of the structure with the different time frames, right? So if daily is bearish, but four hourly is bullish, of course, then the hard time frame is bearish. So what you have to wait for is for the market to come in, to turn bearish, and then to start shorting with the daily time frame. Okay. 
So this is where a lot of a lot of you guys might go wrong, which is an absolutely simple concept. I'm probably gonna do more videos on that. But looking on the left, we tapped. Um, we didn't tap any sort of significant level. We didn't even. Did we also take liquidity below this major low? But yeah, I, I do think we took a. Yeah, we. I think we took it. If I'm just, I really want to be precise. Well, yeah, we, it looks like we just crossed it by a bit. Uh, the low of this candle is 6.45. The low of this candle is 6.36. Yes. So we took the liquidity below these lows right there, which are perfectly equal. We took the liquidity below these lows right there, and this is why we're having this beautiful reaction. Okay, so right now the thing is, um, I want to know what is going to happen next. So I'm just going to enlarge my zone like this to take out for all of this range. And I want you to have a look what happened, right? So the market I came in right there for a beautiful liquidity grab on the top and then sold off, right? So this whole zone, right, you can even take it like this, right, is your selling area. So pretty much my analysis for the Dixie will be, I'm very curious to see how it's going to come in towards this zone. And then I'm going to be monitoring how the four hourly time frame is behaving. Okay. So I want to see a push into the highs and then potentially to start seeing some sell-offs, right? So if I start seeing the sell-offs, then of course, I'm going to continue with that overall bearish trend. But I know that from the weekly time frame we have pulled back towards this beautiful range. We have taken some liquidity, right? Not that we cannot come in for another leg lower and then reverse, right? But so far, I am just following the full hourly trend, which is bearish, right? Looking at this big sell-off, this is the overall daily zone, right? So if the market comes in towards this area, I will start preparing for shorts, okay? Uh, of course, another thing that the market could do is... Um, it might pull back a little bit for a long setup. So if we pull back towards this level, then drop to the 50 minute. Again, utilize all different time frames to your advantage, right? If you understand how the hard time frames are working out, then you can utilize lower time frames to just ping pong price, right? So if this happens, then we pull back right there. If we start finding support from this sort of level, which this level is not strong, don't get me wrong, right? This is not something major. It didn't break a major structure, just broke this. Um, minor structure right there, which is not major, right? But of course, if the market is set to pull back deeper and it, and the market opens bearish, there is a chance we might hold from there and push into the highs, okay? So of course, guys, as every single week, I'm going to let Monday play out, see how price develops. And as I'm currently with my grandparents and uh, I just realized they have removed their Wi-Fi. So I'm currently using... Um, 4G to record those things so the internet might stop anytime so I think I'm gonna have difficulties trading as well uh, but yeah we'll see if, we, if I can catch anything this week but this is pretty much my Dixie analysis let's have a look at you let's have a look at my favorite pair Mr. Euro USD so on the weekly time frame we're having an amazing candle right there it's a very nice reaching candle that grabs liquidity and pulls back towards the bottom of this weekly range right so right now we can consider this also a break and retest the biggest question is, is this pullback enough for the market to start reversing lower? Which is the same question we also have for the Dixie, okay? Um, a little pattern that I want to bring to your attention is, just have a look at this most recent downtrend. Look what happens before every single flush, right? So we pull back a little bit, drop, massive buy, then we sell off, right? So then we pull back a little bit, slow down, massive buy, then we sell off, right? Then we pull back, buy, sell off, right? So right now we do need that buy in order to sell off, right? So the question is, is this it, right? Because we were kind of slowing down right now. So there we have this beautiful buy already rejecting, right? So what do I also tell you about Wix? Is that there is a high chance they can get retested around 25 to 50%. So again, this will be the case whether the market actually decides to reverse, which I'm really not sure of, guys. And again, none of us know, right? None of us know. Some of you are going to start drawing pips, right? There is the FIP. Um, oops, I want to have a normal FIP, right? I do think we're entering the 6 jump. Yeah, there is a beautiful tap of 6 jump point eight, right? Combined with a nice supply zone. So all the confidences are aligning for a sell, right? But what my confidence will be is a shift of structure either on the daily or on the four hourly time frame, right? Because what the daily is doing right now, it is bullish, okay? The flow is still bullish, so we need more signs, okay? Dropping onto the 4H, what we also see is that the 4 hourly structure is also bullish. Why? And what I also want you to see is that this zone right there is pure push, right? There is no liquidity within this zone. So what the market usually tends to do, uh, so if you extract something from today, let that be it, right? When the market taps into a zone, it wants to grab liquidity because the market really 
just you have a zone on the left, the market is just rarely gonna tap and go, right? It's gonna do this if there is some sort of ranges right there. So the market comes in, takes out this range, and then it goes, right? So do we have any sort of such range right there? Nope. So what the market does, taps it, reacts, then pulls back and doesn't break above it, right? So what is this right now? Well, according to me, this could be liquidity, right? So I do believe, if from ex my experience with EU, I do believe there is going to be another push into the highs, of course, but I don't want to say there is going to be, there could be, there might be, there potentially can be another push into the highs, okay? So currently, again, technically, the fall is bullish, whereas our major structure, it's right here. So how I'm going to take it? Well, as a range like this. And this is our daily zone, right? So the market can come in anywhere within this range and continue pushing into the highs. But preferably for me, this is my range. So I would like to see the market pull back right there that I'm going to drop to a lower time frame and I'm going to wait for the shift. And potentially I'm going to be looking for a long, okay? This is not a very powerful reversal formation, right? It's just a failure to make a new hard high. I usually want to see the high taken and then reverse, which is more powerful according to me because then we break a higher low. Is this a higher low? So if you understand structure, guys, you're going to know that this is not a higher low. This is minor structure. Why? Because it didn't make a new high. Okay, so another tip for you on market structure. So this is simple, guys. This is how I'm looking at EU right now. Okay, this is how I look at it. Of course, similar to the Dixie, we might have a pullback to take a short towards the lows, which is something that I don't want to do because it's counter trend, right? It doesn't work. Uh, this week I took a counter trend trade. It's uh, just took 30% out of it and then got stopped out and missed on a beautiful long move. So if you only focus on the on the uh, trends, on the trending trades, you are going to make a lot more money and you're going to save a lot of emotional troubles, right? So again, this is how I look at it. Uh, of course, guys, this could be the high. This could be the daily lower high. So how am I going to get this confirmed? By a nice momentum break either below this low or preferably below all of these lows. And then I'm going to be just, just looking for a pullback and then potentially we can attack the lows. Okay. But this is what we're going to see potentially on Tuesday or for the weeks ahead. Okay. So that is EU. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and break down my trades. Uh, I want to keep this short and simple. I'm afraid my internet is going to stop any moment soon. Uh, but a beautiful long trade that I took on Monday. Yeah, I don't have them saved. So I kind of don't remember. I think the long trade Monday. Yeah, I don't have them, so I'm just going to skip. Yeah, there is the long trade on Monday. So that right there should be the long trade on Monday. Beautiful push. Uh, I do believe I, I wrote it towards this high or I took some partial somewhere right there. But it was a 5-hour trade right there from, the long to the, the, from this low to this high, right? And then I took a short precisely right here. So I caught this little move, right? And I was looking for the market to pull back towards this range, but I was looking for my one minute entry long right there. Uh, but the market just tapped and went, right? And this is why. Why do you take a short? Well, instead, just snap a little long right there. Have a stop loss of five pips and bank your R, bro, right? So this is when I always think, why do you look for those one minute entries? Just kind of trade the 50 minute, have a little bigger stop loss. The return is much better, right? And then there was... a. Uh, uh, I think uh, Wednesday that didn't provide anything. It just started pumping. So you should take those continuation trades. And then the next two days I was traveling uh, to Italy. So that is it, you guys. I'm going to leave it right there. Stay tuned for the Tuesday flow with the markets. And let's carry on with Euro JPY. Let's have a look at Euro Yen. So again, the Yen pairs are slightly bit tricky, but at least we had a nice movement on USD JPY, which we're going to explore later. Um, what I really like about this pair is that it's still held above this major weekly higher low. Uh, it is a question whether this is the major one because we had a little bit of a pullback candle right there that went on and made the new higher high. I'm not really sure. But yeah, pretty much this is the higher low that I need to see broken in order to say that the highest time frame uh, flow is shifting to bearish. Okay. So maybe you can have the monthly as well to support you. But yeah, on the monthly, then this is our major higher low, right? So of course, the market is currently doing something like this from a monthly perspective, tapping at the 50%, right? Beautifully right now taps the 50%. So we can start expecting a little bit of a move higher potentially. But what we first need to see is for the market to really show us that it's going there. So look at that beautiful candle wick right there. Look at that beautiful rejection and look at the reaction, right? 
So what is the disadvantage though is that again the daily is a little bit bearish and this is usually when it gets a little bit tricky to trade because you have this kind of uh oh uh, what's the name um yeah i forgot the word but where for example the weekly shows you one thing the daily shows you one thing and then the forward is going to show you another thing right this is why you need systematicity and to use it's always good to use a lot of time frames, but sometimes it confuses you, right? Because again, weekly is bullish, daily is bearish, forward is bullish, 50 minute is this, right? So you really need to understand where you are. But of course, the simpler you keep it, the better you're going to be. Okay, so daily is currently bearish, but we know that it's reacting beautifully from this zone and it took everything possible that was within this zone. So all the liquidity is taken. So if there are institutions and banks and BFI staying within the zone, they are potentially going to push the price higher. And what we see from the forward time frame is that, yes, uh, the forward has definitely shifted bullish, right? Uh, I do believe it was a bit hard to find that like the lower high, but this is a very clean lower high right there. We broke above it. And as you can see, uh, there is that bearish candle, which I perceived to be the demand a lot of you might say that this as well could be but yeah we can see that the market held from right there expanded nicely into the highs pulls back taps into supply throws a little wick later and then reverses so right now again as we saw from the weekly candle it is indecision right it's slightly bearish but an overall indecision so it's a bit hard to read okay and if you ask me so how do i look at the market right now it has a battle of supply and demand because again where where do we have a strong demand so this is where the market broke structure with very nice momentum so this right there is a very strong demand that we're currently tapping and there is the phone ringing damn that really sucks when somebody calls you the internet actually stops so i'm sorry for that but let's carry on so what i was saying is that we're having this very strong demand but technically right now the structure has shifted a little bit right we have this break of structure right there that created a new hard high right and then technically this is our hard low that also got violated so what is also coming from the top is supply right so there is our strong supply so where are we currently at precisely at the 50 percent between this range low and this range high right it's not precisely but more or less within the middle of the range so yes, right now, if you ask me what are you going to do on Euro Yen, I'm going to wait, right? I'm going to wait because again, yes, we are tapping inside this zone, which is very strong daily zone, right? But we know that we're also tapping in a very strong weekly demand, right? So who is going to take over? And this is why I don't like the JPYs because the JPYs are a little bit fundamentally driven, right? So right now you have to understand how USDJPY will go, why, what is the overall economic sentiment for, for, for that pair, Are is money going to flow into the JPY or is it going to exit and go into the dollar, right? I'm usually not really great with that stuff. This is why I don't usually focus on, on, on the yens, okay? But this is how I currently look at it. Again, what could happen? Well, a lot of things can happen, guys, right? The market can expand from here. It can return back to supply and then sell off, right? It can return back to, to demand and then buy, right? Or, or it can come in for an illiquidity gap and then ship. Okay, so uh, the JPYs are a little bit complex right now. I'm going to try to gather more clues as we go along right now with the other EN pairs. But this is currently my analysis for the EURAM. I do not have something very specific, right? So let's see how it's going to go. There is a, that, that new demand zone right there. So look at that range, manipulation, push outside. So right, a long is possible into the short, right? But again, keep in mind that we are trading in a range again, right? But it's not really a range it's the decision point in which again institutions are going to decide whether we push higher or lower so let's try to go with institutions but first let us show their move then we follow them look at that bullish candle on the aussie wow what an insane push on this one so the aussie was giving us a little bit of a hard time for for some time right deciding whether it wants to go higher or lower and here we are massive fat bullish engulfing candle so Right now, the question is, where is it going next, right? So currently, we're tapping inside this very hard time frame demand, which is on the weekly, right? Monthly reached up to, towards the bottom, right? So if we actually drop this range, we can see where this weekly, where this monthly candle breached, right? 50% of the overall range. And have a look at this, right? Pretty corrective price taking within this push. So is there a chance we head towards 080, right? Well, we're going to see. But this is too long term. I usually don't like too, too long term. So yeah, on the weekly time frame, what we can explore is that it's absolutely bullish, right? So is it pulling back in order to sell off or is it reversing? That is the biggest question, right? And of course, nobody has the answer. What we have to do is just follow the flow, okay? 
daily time frame showed us the shift for quite a while and what i was telling you is that i don't like this flat price action so i thought that we're at least gonna take like towards this portion and then tap into this supply right which happened very nicely right and we sold off uh but we see that actually the bulls came in and pushed the market very nicely hard so some of you might have been tricked into shorts uh, because the, the short look really nice, right? So again, uh, there is this kind of whack off schematic right there. Push, 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 push like the final one. Then there is your shift, right? Which creates this supply. Um, then the market actually went on and broke lower. So the, it was there was that time when I was, I'm not trading AU, but I shouted at the short from the zone. It just grabbed it, tapped into the extreme zone. Then we actually started pulling back a little bit. But again, guys, always look at momentum, right? Nice bearish momentum right there. It looks beautiful, but then massive bullish momentum breaking above. And then look at the bearishness, right? Is this signifying that the market is going to sell off? Well, no, right? It's just complex creating flat highs, then just to, to take them out massively, right? But yeah, this was pretty much the price action on AU this week, right? We got stuck for around, yeah, almost two days, right? From the top. Yeah, almost two days right there, and then the market just pumped. And then maybe if you took a little long right there on late uh, Thursday or Friday, then that's fine, right? But yes, we are traveling right now towards this weekly supply where we're going to have a brand new story to read. So yes, hopefully some of you guys are uh, caught a long on AU. If you got a short, just don't worry, right? It was short, right? Of course, a lot of times we're going to get it wrong, right? So currently we have this massive pump into the highs that is pulling us back and already creating a new hard high. Technically we have this as our demand, which the market already tapped inside by also taking this low right there. And we're just about to push into the highs. So which makes me think that we might straight hit to the highs, take out the high, right? This one, and then start tapping within this big, big supply, uh, which is again going to build a brand new story, right? We're going to see how it's going to re uh, respond from these zones right there. Is it going to keep... Potation is not just going to tap and go. I can guarantee you this, right? It's going to come in, consolidate, come in again, consolidate again, come in again. Then as it starts shifting, then that is when you're going to start selling as well. Okay. So my analysis is very simple. I see how the structure is developing right there. And again, according to my rules, this is my major higher low, right? We can also take this little candle, which means that we can have another run into the lows. Absolutely possible. Um, there is a major demand that is probably seen on the daily. There it is, right? So this is another major demand that we can travel towards. Uh, but traveling towards that is a lot of pips, right? Oh, 150 pips for AU is, is quite a lot. So if you travel all the way towards that, I'm not really sure whether we're going to have the space to make a big reversal, right? So again, as every week, it is tricky to analyze on Saturday. This is why I usually don't do man analysis on Sunday. I wait for Monday to develop and then I really focus Tuesday morning right or uh, monday evening tuesday morning is my best time to really have a look at what the market is doing okay so let that be another tip for you okay so i leave it like this uh, i do expect bullishness of course on, on the aussie uh, there is a chance we might throw a, a new push to the downside to grab even more liquidity then to reverse there is a very high chance we're just gonna pop above this high and then as we pop above this high we have to adapt right because then our new higher low is gonna be this right so then what we have to do is again wait for a pullback and continue going higher so i am bullish on the aussie let me know what you guys think and uh yeah let's see how monday is gonna open and how we can adapt to it and also having a look at aj we're having a beautiful bullish engulfing candle after this beautiful pin bar so definitely right now it makes sense that it's more bullish than it's bearish so uh yeah potentially we are right now going to attack uh high as liquidity so the most recent high is this so this could be our first target uh but yes right now you can see that the daily is gonna tell you that it's bearish but again the weekly is bullish so this is pretty much that confusion you can oftentimes get so yes we can draw this supply from which we can expect a reaction but again the question is which time frame is gonna prevail or which direction well it's usually gonna be the highest time frame one right because yes, right now the daily is might be bearish, but if the monthly is bullish, which it is, and if the weekly is bullish, which it is, it should go higher, right? So let's see. Just do some little levels right there on the daily, immediately going on to the 4H. Yes, we can see that the market just opened, pushed. And on Tuesday, I do believe I was calling this sort of level. The market beautifully retested and went going on. So hopefully some of you guys took some longs from right there. Um, 
Yeah, it formed in a slightly tricky fashion with the news that came in, then it's chopped around a little bit. So hopefully some of you took took some trades, but but look at the price, right? It it looks rather rather tricky, right? It looks like a heartbeat, right? Then we have this boom manipulation continues and then it goes right so it stacks stack 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 and then it just decides to go so hopefully some of you again got this one um but yes right now we're tapping inside the supply uh, i also have this full hourly and daily demand so yes we're also taking a little bit of liquidity right there which is great so again what could happen is we can take a short into the long right there right uh, the market might continue to consolidate right there then maybe start shifting uh, but overall guys i think i'm gonna be long uh, on the JPYs, uh, but it really depends also what happens on UJ, right? I really want to see UJ first, and maybe I really have to analyze UJ after the Dixie because it's pretty much our Dixie for the JPYs, right? So yes, I'm bullish on on AJ. Uh, I also like the bullishness on the Aussie overall. So right, taking a long is gonna be a high probability, but also I th there is a chance there could be a where is that thing? There could be a short within this area, right? So stay tuned for that and let's flow with the markets on Tuesday. As we usually know, the entities are pretty much the same as the Aussies with, again, slight bit of dif uh, differences. We're having that same weekly supply that the market is about to tap. So again, the question is, is it just gonna tap or reverse? But also if I just quickly transfer on the monthly time frame, we are potentially coming in from this very strong demand, which is with the monthly direction, right? Have a look at the monthly. We nicely pushed into the highs. We very correctively pulled back for, for what is it, uh, 515 days? Well, almost two years. Yeah, almost two years, right? So for long-term traders, then this is definitely looking like a good um, long setup, right? So again, going on to the weekly, it is still bearish, but then daily is probably bullish already. Yeah, daily is definitely bullish. We, we already shifted from here, then the market kind of... Uh, was responding from this sort of zones but again we had all of these flat highs that the market is currently taking so we're tapping inside the supply so right now our daily range is this so this is our demand so if you wish drop a fib like this although i don't drop fibs on the daily right i immediately go on the voyage okay so what could happen guys is again it, it requires a little bit of experience and maybe um me explaining this stuff a little bit so i will be looking for the market to come in deeper within this range uh, probably attacking some of these highs right there, right? So this is a little zone that I will be looking to get breached. And uh, looking at this big pump, right? The market cannot go forever. It's going to give you a short uh, anytime soon, right? Or of course it can, uh, similarly to the Aussie dollar, if you're looking for a quick setup, then it could be this guy like this. Okay, so that is a long setup. If we just pop into the highs, then I'm going to be looking for potential shorts. Why, right? Because then I'm going to drop to the daily and the daily is going to be extended, tapping into supply, which this supply is a reaction point. It's not a reversal, it's a reaction. So then what I'm going to be looking for is for the market to pull me back towards 50% so I can long it with the monthly trend. Okay, so hopefully what I just said makes sense, right? So then again, zooming in onto the quality time frame, there is a potential uh, short term long opportunity, right? If we start with this bearish move to the downside and then pop into the highs, targeting these highs on the left, right? And then I'm going to be looking for signs for a potential short to give us that daily pullback and then to potentially continue higher, okay? But this once again is a little bit long term, so this is how I look at it. Again, if the market gives you a long, great, and if it just pops and takes the liquidity and taps into this big supply zone, uh, then we adapt and just look for signs, okay? So again, wait for Monday, let's see how the market is going to play out. NZD JPY, again, probably more bullish uh, than bearish. Uh, yes, very nicely reaching with this wick right there, tapping into uh, what is potentially monthly or weekly supply. Yep. And right now it looks like it's headed with full steam towards breaking some of these wick highs right there. And uh, yeah, again, similar to everything, it is right now tapping into supply. The question is, is it going to react to give us a pullback, then to enter long and continue going higher? right? Something like this. Or is it just gonna break through everything and just push, right? Uh, we have docks right there as well. They keep barking at every car. So yeah, there is this kind of zone. Like this pair doesn't look great. Like look at that price action right there. Where is the brush? Look at that. I don't like this one, right? 
But currently we have this beautiful push into the highs. We have this last range, which again, guys, this is really not a zone that I will be drawing. It just doesn't look fine, right? There's our last break. There is that big wick. So technically the higher low is within this big wick, right? But I also want to take the range. So this is kind of a zone that I can take, right? So when is it JPY? If I was trading this round, I would probably approach like an hourly time frame. But even the hourly time frame doesn't look great. Right there is, it was tons of manipulation right there. Just look at that, guys. Like, this is bad. All of these people longing, shorting, shorting. Then we buy to trick the buyers, stop all the sellers. Then we sell to stop out all the buyers, trick sellers. And then we go, right? So everybody was just murdered in this move right there. Hopefully, some of you guys got this right. Uh, but yes, I'm not going to spend more time on NJ because I simply don't understand that. I'm just waiting for more signs. But NZUSD looks a bit cleaner. So let's see how our potential outcomes are going to play out. Let's have a look at Mr. USDJPY. So we are pulling back very nicely towards this overall big range, which I take as a range, not a single candle, because the single candle is way too little, right? We are right now pulling back towards the 50% very nicely, right? Which is a lot of long confluences right there. So what we right now need is to really see the shift, shift, right? To really see the shift happen. A lot of bearish pressure is coming in from the top. Like, look at we started from here, like we first have this like one, two, three, four drives into the highs. We shift right there, lower high, boom, massive lower low. Nice corrective lower high right now. Massive bearish engulfing candle. So right now my question is whether we have opportunity to take out this low and then reverse or are we going to reverse from current price? Um, I don't think so. And again, it's, it's the JPY, right? It's the JPY, which is another science itself. And it's also the USD. Okay, so a lot of power forces are going together right there. So let's have a look at the technicals. This was our hard time frame supply. The market tapped inside, reacted, tapped again, reacted, right? But then it looks like demand held over. So the market actually pushed into the highs, right? Pulled us back a little bit deeper. Then it consolidated, the news came out right there and just dumped the price, which also broke the last high low, right? It could be here, it could be there. It doesn't matter, everything was broken, right? Broken. Then we continue making a new lower low right there, but yeah, this lower low was uh, lower high was pretty shallow, so it usually does usually get broken, right? So technically, right now we have this range right there as supply that is the major supply that actually caused the shift uh, and the break of this higher low. So again, my question on this one is: we have a couple of scenarios, right? Just because this demand also broke the most recent lower high, which is there, this one, we can have something like this. Right, and then we're gonna see what happens from there. We are can break above or just stop right there, or we can of course have a push into the highs and then see what's gonna happen. If this happens, there is a very high chance we're gonna go lower, right? Um, do we have a third one? Well, yeah, a third one will be just to drop. Uh, I don't think that's gonna happen because it probably needs more liquidity. So yeah, UJ is also tricky according to me, guys. Please let me know what what you think in the comments. I always listen to you, always uh, get your feedback as well. But those are the two situations that I currently see, right? I do like this demand right there because it grabbed liquidity and broke structure. It's not the most impulsive one, but it still is, right? So if the market actually opens bearish, taps into this demand, I'm going to be dropping to like a 15 minute time frame to see if we have any signs for a bullish shift. And if the market opens bullish, I'm going to see how it, um, uh, how it develops within this supply, which is a pretty major one. And it might give us the chance to potentially take a big sell towards this low, right? If we explore, so this low was taken as liquidity and right there we stopped pretty much within this little range, right? Okay, we actually broke it. So there is some sort of a liquidity grab happening right there. So again, guys, we need more signs. We need more signs. A lot of you might also think, okay, there is our push 50%. We're going long, right? I really want to see this one broken though in order to really start going long. So let's see, right? It's a tricky place for USDN. It just kissed the demand, which is like the... Yeah, it's like a weekly demand, which is not very correct because it's all these sell candles. All right, guys, I'm back. My grand <laughs> called me for a bit and I was gone for 10 minutes. So yeah, back to the point. Again, there is a high chance we go for another liquidity grab lower, then reverse higher. But again, I'm just going to be following right now the, the four-hour time frame and this current battle between supply and demand, right? So those are my two outcomes that I expect in the shorter term. So of course, let's flow with the markets and let's see which one is going to play out. And of course, something completely different might happen on Monday. This is why we're going to also flow with the markets on Tuesday. 
All right, let's have a look at the pound pair starting from GBP USD. We are right now having an inside bar, which is a really good thing because we can expect a potential breakout, right? So right now our task will be to potentially find which direction the breakout is gonna occur. Of course, sometimes the inside bars are also great for manipulation. Let's say you can have like a move into the highs, then it's gonna attack the lows, right? So this could be the weekly cycle, right? So technically GU is bearish, right? If we just drop that overall bearish range right there, we see that we pulled back very nicely above 50% once, twice, three times, right? So we're retesting a zone that we can probably refine and find on the daily, right? And just to consult with the monthly, we are a little bit low, right? We are a little bit low. So there is a chance that we might actually pull back a little bit higher, but this is of course gonna depend on the pound and on the dollar. So a little bit tricky because the structure is not telling me a lot. Like on GU, usually there are a lot of intraday opportunities right now, but in terms of higher time frame direction, it is a little bit tough. To identify right so we have this high right now retesting this uh this lower high on the left responding but then also failing to break like where i do believe that major higher low on the daily is right it's not very clean but this is the last bearish candle before that big move so i'm gonna take it as it is right and as you can see we push and pull back we tap inside this one we react but then the reaction also fails to make a new higher high which then creates our inside bar on the daily i mean on the weekly right so there is uh, the Fawali, which starts to build up a little bit more sense, right? So within that zone, we have these equal lows. We also have this. All of it was taken as liquidity. Then according to me, that was our last supply lower high. The market came in, tried to react, failed. Came in, tried to react, and then it broke higher, right? So gathering all of these confluences, right? It makes me think that GU is more bullish than bearish, which again, I'm not really sure. I'm not a big fan of GU. I'm not usually trading it, right? Uh, but this is how I currently look at it, right? It's already retesting the demand, right? Uh, which means we might come in again, right? We might come in again and then shift the structure. So this is something that I would like to see for long opportunity, right? A little bit of a lower low, breaking below this low, then a shift of structure, higher high, higher low, and then a potential long towards that um, weekly inside bar high, right? And of course, the short opportunity will come in if we really break strongly below, right? Which is currently our major higher low is this guy, right? So if we strongly break below our major higher low, that is when I'm also going to be looking for shorts, right? So it can look something like this. Right, so those are my two scenarios on GU. Again, just building all of that up right now, I do believe we are more long bias because I really like how the market tapped inside this demand, right? Try it, try it, and then we just flipped massively into the highs. And right now, we're just pulling back towards where that flip to the upside occurred, right? Of course, right now, we know that we have... Uh, I really do think we're going to have another push into the lows, right? I don't think that enough liquidity was collected within the right there. It is possible, but also knowing how Monday works... It's going to come in, take out the previous day's low, right there, which is Friday's low, and then shift to the upside, and then potentially we can see the move, okay? So for now, this is going to be my analysis, and of course, on Tuesday, it can be something completely different, so let's see how the market develops. Going on to GJ, um, we can see that GJ is not as bullish as the other pairs, right? Yeah, this one always gives me a hard time, guys. Like, look at all those wicks. Go down, up, down, up, down. Big wick up, big wick down. Right now, again, inside bar. So, very tough when it comes to analyzing GJ. We are overall bullish once again. It's also a little bit hard to find, like, my major high low. It's this candle. So, we came in, came in twice. Right now, we liquidity grabbed the two times, right? This is why we rejected so much. So, which immediately might start... Uh, trigger is triggering us into longs, right? Judging by this beautiful liquidity gap. But then we go on the daily and what we see bearish structure, right? There is the bearish uh, um, lower high right there, supply, right? So we push to the downside, we pull back 50% and right now we're just consolidating in and around the 50%, right? So again, tough price action to read. It is the toughest when the market is in the middle, right? This is why usually people say don't trade, don't what well, is don't middle don't diddle in the middle right i think that that's that's the, the saying yeah then going on to the 4h what do we guys have boom range right we have a range since the market the uh, 4th of august up until today 
it is just ranging right and it's a little bit tough for me to identify what is happening okay so again uh, uh might be a bit disappointing but i'm actually pretty confident to say that i don't know what's gonna happen on gj so usually what i do is just i just leave the pair right while my someone might actually try to force and really try to decide where the mark is gonna go i'm just gonna let it go right and i'm not feeling like bad about myself that i don't know what's gonna happen right and that I don't have any analysis, I just know how to wait and wait for proper market structure to get introduced. Because of course, right now I can zoom in and try to find something, right? I'm, but I'm gonna find a lot of things, right? Uh, I can see that this push in the pullback, but then the market fails to break the high, but still looks like liquidity. Then I'm gonna find this demand. The market responded. We can take a long from here, but still technically this was the last pullback, our high. Then we shifted the structure right there. So market is holding from supply, right? So this one then is supposed to break to the downside, right? So there are so many outcomes that I see on this chart that I actually don't prefer to trade it, <laughs> okay? So this is GJ, guys. Hopefully we have more clues on Tuesday. I'm going to give you a better update. So let's see how it opens and let's see if we can catch something. Beautiful bullish sentiment on gold, pretty much as expected right now. As we're having that optimism in the stock market, this is going down. Inflation is said to be slowing down, which I again don't think so. How it's going to slow down so quickly? Well, it's possible because they really aggressively hiked the rates, right? We see another bullishness on gold tapping into 1800s. And uh, as we forecast it pretty much together, because I'm not a master of gold, I always listen to you. A lot of you guys said that you expect longs like towards 1800. So there it is, right? So our task right now is to determine what is the next step, okay? I always think also in terms of liquidity, what is taken and does the, it has the market gathered enough orders in order to continue pushing lower, right? With the overall trend, right? So we came in. Responded higher lows, higher highs right now, pull back higher lows. So it looks like actually rather bullish, right? Um, uh, it, it is possible that currently liquidity is gathering. Again, I still plan to stay a just a little bit of whack off because I keep seeing that these kind of drives into the highs and then all of a sudden a sharp reversal into the lows, right? So this could be something that is cooking right now. But so far, according to me, the market is still bullish, okay? There is that major break above um yeah i'm gonna say that this is my major high low right why because this right there is a little bit wiki right it's a bit wiki because then you can say that this is a pullback this is a break then there is your shift of structures then you technically start shorting from there and get stop loss why because this is not a significant break why because there is where your major move started and this zone hasn't been retested okay so Looking at this three bullish candles, right, it might induce us into buying the market, which may again makes me think that we might actually take out this high, right? It is definitely possible. Uh, but as I also told you, there is a chance that the market has actually broken this last higher low, right? If you count wicks as breaks, so this is your higher high, break, pullback, tried to push lower, failed to break this low, which is again not a confirmed trend. You only have a confirmed shift of the trend once we have this right first the break of the last higher low and then a break of the this lower low and a confirmation right because oftentimes you can have this right there is the break of the last higher low cool then you start shorting from here just to get stopped out right so right now we had this the market shift the structure you shorted from right there the market tries to push fails so right now the question is whether this wick is going to provide us with some selling pressure and this little highs acting right there as liquidity or are we just going to keep carrying on to the upside right so then we can have something like this okay so guys as long as that bullish optimism as long as that uh dollar is bearish and as long as we keep with this overall sentiment i do think we're going long okay so if you want to short gold just don't right wait for signs wait for the market to start trending down because you're technically right now shorting a bullish market right it could it is a short-term bullish market potentially right we never know but just don't try to catch a pumping rocket right it's usually a falling knife but this one is pumping up so i don't know what the the reverse saying is right so so let me know, guys, of course, what you think about gold in the comments. This is my currently my outlook. Uh, I am still bullish, so waiting for more signs. Look at that beautiful bullish candle on US 30. We just opened, we pumped, and we actually didn't even leave a wick above, right? So a lot of things, right? We can read this market in a lot of ways right now, right? I am also following a couple of analysts, right? 
Some of they say that the average rally in um, in a bear market is like uh, specific percentages, right? So for Nasdaq, it was like 20 something, which I think currently on the Nasdaq, we are in this, um, yeah, 23. I think it was 22, the average uh, pullback, right? Uh, US 30 is a little bit less. But again, guys, a lot of ways for us to read this price action, because again, as I kept saying, this was like the last supply that I was looking to short. And right now we break above it, right? Which technically means we are shifting to a bullish market. But of course, we have all of these supply levels to also battle with on the left. And of course, we also have to look at the economic uh, sentiment and how the uh, the overall economy, the, the US economy, the world economy is doing, right? Of course, the stock market is not a determinant of the economy and, and vice versa, right? But right now we have a lot of optimism and prices are soaring. The stocks are looking really good. So I'm kind of starting to think, well, I was looking for further downside to, to really also increase my investing size. And all of a sudden, everything has gone up and I haven't bought. Yeah, I'm, I'm still buying individual stocks right now because the indices just keep climbing higher. Right. But it has been a little bit tricky for me to figure out what is going on. Right. In, in terms of my investments. OK, so. This could be a potential zone that we can long, but again, this is something new for me when it also comes to indices. Of course, intraday, there are always opportunities, but I try to really look and judge what is potentially going to happen in the long term. Okay, A lot of people say uh, that the market might pull back again 25 to 30% before again bottoming down, right? This is going to be massive to watch, right? It's also going to be painful for investors because we just see a little bit of upsides. Our portfolios are starting to recover. Whoever was buying as the market was flushing right now, it's paying out. Right. But of course, um, I am holding those things because I don't want to pay taxes. Right. I'm holding them <laughs> for years. Right. But if I was actually more swing trading them, I would take some profits right there for everything that I bought right there. I would take profits right there and then usually wait for the flush and then to scale in again. Right, so this is how I would approach it, but I'm not doing this, okay? So how to read all of this bullishness? Well, again, we have that optimism. So right now, we can potentially look to see the market climb towards uh, the 34 handle, right? We have these little zones right there that we can potentially react to, but they can also be used as liquidity. Like, look at where that drop occurred, right? There's this big buy-off, and then we sold off, right? The market pretty much went to retest precisely like 25 to 50% of this uh, buy to sell right there. Uh, and right now we're taking it, taking it up. So I'm really confused right now and also very, very curious to know what's going to happen. Okay. So right here, it was also looking like a walk-off schematic, right? More or less, probably it accumulated for another very nice pump higher. And probably what I always tell you guys, it sometimes it looks too easy, right? Yes, this is the weakest supply. We are gonna sell off from there. Probably a lot of people sold off. And of course, the banks are gonna do exactly the opposite, okay? So right now, in terms of the quality structure, there is our last break of structure right here. There is our last demand zone. So as long as this flow retains, I keep longing, okay? If you remember what I have been telling you about, guys, about this consolidation period, wait for the market to introduce the sales, right? Wait for at least two structural points to break, right? We have one break right there, but this is the only low we got, right? The market, the market pullback, chopped around, sold up. This was never broken. And what did I tell you? Sometimes you have, uh, so let's say, yeah, sometimes you have the shift, right? Then the market pulls back, looks like it's holding, but then it just breaks. Why? Because you need to see also a break of this guy right there so this is how i currently look at it guys but again you know me uh indices i always look in terms of weekly and daily time frame because i'm pretty much uh position trading those things right investing also for the long term so uh yes currently i am pretty bullish nasdaq as well is currently nicely actually in a very nice uptrend so we should be longing nasdaq for quite a while right now there is the last daily demand that the market respected, right? So if I just quickly drop to the weekly time frame, we can see on the weekly, this is the real range, right? And we're just pulling back above the 50%. And if I just drop a normal fib, we are haven't even tapped the 61.8 yet, right? So this right there, this sort of pocket, right? There could be potential opportunity for shorts if, of course, the market is actually going to reverse. But again, I don't think we have found the bottom right there. It just happened too sudden but again guys um i'm just extremely honest although i'm publishing my view i'm not an experienced trader especially when it comes to 
to indices, right? I'm investing in them and I'm quite successful about that as well. So I'm, I'm probably going to start speaking more about my investments as well. Uh, but I'm experiencing like a nice bear market for this first time. When COVID hit right there, I had some holdings, right? But I got scared, right? Two years ago, I got scared. I thought it's going to keep dropping lower without realizing that this is the absolute golden opportunity, right? But then, of course, on the way up, I was I kept buying all of these, especially on the S&P, right? So right now, we actually had this beautiful downturn, right? Which is a, a nice bearish market. It's, just, it's not the crash, right? It is a bearish market. So it is something new to me that I'm experiencing. Um, but yes, currently, this is my last daily higher low, right? So make sure to mark it up like this. And this is where I'm potentially going to be looking to long, right? Uh, right now we had a push, a pullback. The market is already making a new hard high. So technically on the 4H, you can also look to long from a level like this, right? So either of those, they are fine, right? I keep longing Nasdaq as long as the market is going long, okay? And this one actually, guys, never gave you a bearish signal, right? Never. It just pulls back to daily zones. This is why I use them on the daily, right? Because the daily is really how those indices work. I find it's really nice because on the 4H, they tend to give you like those short-term shifts, right? Then just to liquidity grab you, to manipulate you into selling just before the big buy, okay? So this is my view on NASDAQ and also S&P is just looking lovely. Like my S&P holdings are just rocketing right now because I kept buying on every single dip. So it's looking beautiful right now. But again, I'm asking myself because I was looking for much deeper prices. I think 35 is what I was looking for, right? And right now, all of a sudden, I see this reversal. So I'm like, okay, is it over? So should I actually uh, flip my strategy right now and start buying dips, right? So yeah, massive, beautiful uptrend. I actually regret not buying more down there. But of course, it's always like this. We always regret. There is a very nice demand that just actually didn't even retest. There is the last structure break and um, there is this zone but yeah just going back to the daily this is pretty much my daily zone so remember what i tell you guys trade from daily zones okay on the weekly we have similar to us 30 this is our last supply right that we have so this is potentially where we can see like a nice reaction but as the market keeps climbing we can of course attack this high they're pretty equal right they might get taken out uh, but yeah, if you get any intraday nice long opportunities, then keep longing, right? The sentiment is currently bullish as long as we don't start making nice lower lows and lower highs, okay? So those are indices. I'm very curious to see what's going to happen. I'm learning on the go and I'm quite excited about it. Crypto um, played out nicely. Overall, my analysis is still there, right? Yeah, so as you can see again on the daily, guys, on the daily, yes, we have this massive bearish weekly leg. This is the first leg where haven't even tapped 50%, then we have a second leg that we are about to tap 50% as well, right? So technically right now we're bullish, push pullback, push pullback towards demand, quality time frame. This was my analysis on Tuesday, which played out very nicely, right? We retested the demand. We kind of broke a little bit below it, right? So we pretty much went towards this zone, which is probably the correct zone to draw in hindsight, right? And then utilizing these zones as liquidity, right? Then we push up, pull back, and right now we keep pushing higher, okay? Knowing, of course, that the highest time frames are bearish, I'm currently avoiding to buy. I'm also stuck in that enthusiast thing. All my holdings are just locked in right there, and I just don't have any mood to invest in crypto right now or do anything. So I'm just waiting for at least part of my money to be returned, right? It's a five-figure sum, so it's, it's not little, right? Just to let it go so easily. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is. So... Technically, again, right now, the market is bullish. But as we know, crypto, it tends to retest the extremes, right? So those are two potential long zones that you can look at. And uh, yes, keep going with that bullish daily flow as long as we are trading below the 50%, which we're just about to tap. But even if we trade above 50%, there is nothing to retest, right? There is that wick to retest, right? Uh, but I would be looking for a potential retest of this big range. So it looks like we have a lot of upside. But again the market looks a little bit dead to me, right? Ethereum is back above 2K, right? Ethereum, I have some a lot of holdings in Ethereum as well. My biggest is Bitcoin, but Ethereum has also been a nice crypto. Uh, I was also doing Litecoin back in the year, but Litecoin is, is a little bit stuck. So yeah, right now, this is just expanding into the highs. So what we can do is, of course, just follow the flow. We can throw a little bit of a weekly analysis. We're traveling towards the 50% right now of this massive bearish leg, right? 
daily time frame is bullish whereas our last higher low is right there so technically guys this is your best analysis you can do daily zones daily fips right then just wait for the market on the forward to shift maybe you can take some intraday opportunities right towards the 50 percent and then just ride it higher okay but this is how i'm gonna leave it right for me daily zones are the best focus on actually seeing the market reverse and don't get tricked from buying from zones like this that are above 50 percent because most of the time they're gonna break then to tap into 50 percent and then you think ah, oh, the market is going short no the market is then gonna reverse okay so those are the cryptos and i'm very again once again excited about the indices and yes guys this is how i'm gonna wrap up this video I'm sorry it was a bit quick, but I have people again running around. The internet is stopping often. Somebody interrupts me quite often. So it's going to be like this for this week and probably the next week. But I'm back full time in September. But I'm really excited to start putting together some new content to actually start trading properly full time. Take on some new challenges, scale some more accounts and to do some great stuff with my community as well. Right. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, again, throw a comment, hit the like button. Let me know what you think and see you on flow with the markets on Tuesday.